All right, this is it. The last full stretch. In this series of videos, we will be finishing corporation law. So sit back, relax, and listen very, very carefully. So last time we stopped here at bylaws. So the question looms, no? Kailan ba pe pwedeng mag-submit ng bylaws? At this point, I suppose malinaw naman na sa atin kung kailan dapat mag-submit ng articles of incorporation. But how about the bylaws? Incorporators or the corporate officers of the corporation as the case may be, may submit bylaws at two points in time. Either one of these two points, either prior to or before incorporation or at any time after. So pwedeng bago mag-incorporate, kasabay ng articles of incorporation and all of the other requisites na kinakailangang ipasa sa SEC para maisuhan tayo ng certificate of incorporation or at any time after that. Pwedeng kasabay ng articles, pwedeng pagkatapos maisuhan ng certificate. No? Either way is good. Either way is allowed under the law. So we're done with that. Ngayon, we will be talking about the powers of a corporation. We have established early on in this portion of our uh, subject coverage that a corporation is possessed of certain powers. Three kinds of powers in class ng mga corporation. There are express powers, there are implied powers, and there are incidental powers. Express powers are those expressly authorized by the Revised Corporation Code and other laws in its articles or charter. Implied powers, on the other hand, are those that can be inferred from or necessary for the exercise of the express powers. So basically, implied powers, yan yung powers na makikita natin by reading between the lines doon sa kung ano ang nakasaad sa Corporation Code sa ibang mga batas na applicable, sa Articles of Incorporation, o di kaya in case of public corporations doon sa charter. Alright? Finally, we have what we call incidental powers. Powers that are incidental to the existence of the corporation. Now, take note na minsan itong mga kinds na to, itong mga classifications na to, nag-overlap. There are express powers that are incidental in nature, kagaya ng power ng isang corporation to acquire properties. So we have already gotten down path the three kinds or categories of powers of a corporation. So malinaw na sa atin yun, ang may iwan e sino o sino-sino ang may kakayanan o may kapangyarihan na i-exercise ang mga corporate powers na to. Of course, the answer would be the board of directors. This is the entity. This is the group of people na merong kakayanan o discretion to exercise corporate powers. As a general rule, the board alone exercises corporate powers. Hindi kinakailangang hingin ang permiso o agreement ng mga stockholders. It is the board alone which mans or which... Uh, drives this vehicle that we call the corporation. The board is the captain of the ship. The board is the one which tells the corporation where to go. The stockholders following this general rule, they are merely along for the ride. By way of exception though, as we'll learn a bit later, specific powers. There are specific powers that require the concurrence of stockholders. Merong mga kapangyarihan ng isang korporasyon na hindi sapat ang imprimatur ng board of directors. Kailangan din ng permiso ng mga stockholders. Now, there are situations though where the board does not exercise corporate powers. Like for example, if there is a management contract. A management contract, in a nutshell, is a, is a contract or agreement which designates who gets to exercise corporate powers for the corporation. So, syempre, bilang may kontrata, what have we learned during our oblicon? 
during your obligon rather, diba, the contract is the law between the parties. So unless there are any stipulations therein that are contrary to law, good customs, morals, public order, or public policy, those stipulations must govern, must be honored, and must be followed in good faith. Now, another kind of situation where the board does not exercise corporate powers, if the powers of the board are delegated by majority vote of the board itself to an executive committee created under the bylaws and comprised of at least three board members. You see, we can imply a number of things already this early. Number one, the board is a collegial body. Hindi yan nag-iisang tao lang. As we can glean from its name, the board is a group of people and they decide on matters not individually but as a collegial body. They put matters to a vote. So kinakailangan in order for a proposal to push through, in order for a proposal to be approved by the board, to be carried by the board, kinakailangan nilang magbotohan. Of course, what we follow in a following the deliberations of the Board of Directors or the Board of Trustees, as the case may be, kinakailangan ng simple majority. No? A simple majority is all that is required. So what is a simple majority? 50% plus 1. All right? So ngayon, dito sa situation na to, ang kinocontemplate ay the board, somebody from the board has proposed that they delegate the exercise of corporate powers to another body, to an executive committee. So now the board puts the proposal to a vote and then the majority of the board decides in favor of this proposal. So an executive committee or an execom is formed. Now, the parameters of this execom should follow whatever, what, whatever is stated in the bylaws. And of course, part of the membership of this execom as I would think a measure of supervision para nakikita at nasusundan ng board kung ano ang lahat ng galaw ng execom, the execom must comprise of at least three board members. Now, of course, there are some things that the execom cannot do, notwithstanding the delegated power coming from the board. Of course, number one, specific powers that require stockholder concurrence. Of course, needless to say, the execom cannot pull off or cannot wield this power or these powers by its lonesome because kailangan ng agreement ng stockholders. Next, filling of vacancies in the board. This is a prerogative that only the board of directors can do. No, Kapag merong nag-resign, kung merong nag-retire o merong namatay doon sa board, it is only the action of the board of directors itself that can fill this vacancy. Next, adoption, amendment, or repeal of bylaws. Of course, this cannot be done by the execom alone. Next, the amendment or repeal of a board resolution which by its terms cannot be amended or repealed. And finally, the distribution of cash dividends. Common denominator dito sa limang to, Puro seryosong matters, puro mabibigat na matters na hindi pe pwedeng iatang lang sa execom. More often than not, it has to be the board of directors itself which should act upon these issues. Now, our rule of thumb here is that corporate officers, which we will define in full in the next slide, I think. For example, the president is a corporate officer or agents, no corporate agents. Persons acting on behalf of the corporation, these people may bind the corporation. Of course, provided that their actions fall within the authority granted to them. Of course, the president of a corporation has a set of powers and functions and duties. Now, of course, if this president acts within the confines of his duty, his actions will bind the corporation. So the same is true with agents representing the corporation with regard to certain transactions. So ito, sino-sino ang mga corporate officers? You have to think of four general categories or four positions. Number one, of course, the president. The president of a corporation is a corporate officer. 
Of course, the president has to be a member of the board of directors. Next, the treasurer or yung corporate treasurer who is required to be a resident of the Philippines. Next up is the corporate secretary who must be also a resident of the Philippines as well as a Filipino citizen. Actually, ang corporate secretary, ang buhay corpsec or corsec, depende sa kung sino ang magsasabi sa inyo, this is one of the more lucrative jobs in the corporate sphere. Seasoned lawyers in the private practice, sumasideline sila as corporate secretaries. Ang trabaho lang eh, mag-review ng kontrata para sa board of directors, magbigay ng any legal advice, mag-authenticate, mag-countersign ng mga dokumento na kailangan pirmahan ng presidente. You know, paper heavy, pero hindi ka pagod. Or at least bodily, hindi ka pagod. At ang upside nun, you earn a lot of money. Now, of course, I am from government, so I, I really have no idea. I only learn of this from my friends in corporate. Pero apparently, mga abogado na nakakakuha ng gig as Corsic, ito yung mga yumayaman. Sana all. Finally, other officers as may be provided in the bylaws. What can we imply from here? The corporation, through the bylaws, has sufficient elbow room through which to add other positions or other designations na pe pwedeng mag-qualify as corporate officers. So, hindi sila limited dun sa presidente, dun sa treasurer, o dun sa corsec. Through the bylaws, pe pwede pa silang mag-enumerate, mag-include ng iba pa mga position. Simply by stating in the bylaws na, ah, this position, administrative officer 5, for example. This position is a corporate office. And the person occupying this position, the incumbent officer, is a corporate officer. Pe pwedeng gawin yun. Now, while we're talking about powers, let us dive straight into the three categories we outlined earlier. So ngayon, express powers, expressly or explicitly provided under the law or any other issuance, no? We take a look first at Section 35 of the Revised Corporation Code. General powers. The general powers of a corporation na I think napasadahan natin in passing before. Of course, a corporation has the power to sue and be sued. Not in the name of any of its incorporators, not in the name of its board of directors, not in the name of its company president, but in its own name. Why, it's, why is it so? Because as we have established long ago, a corporation has its own separate and distinct personality. Now, a corporation also has what we call the power of perpetual existence. This is a development introduced through the revised corporation code. Dati hindi ganito. Because before, the general rule is that corporations are finite creatures. Meron silang hangganan. Okay, may expiry ang kanilang mga buhay. However, now the rule has been appended. Iba na ang general rule ngayon. Ngayon sa sabihin ng mga publicists ng mga ng SEC or ng other uh, government offices regulating corporations, sa sabihin nila. And I think yun nga yung sinabi nila sa kanilang mga pamphlets uh, informing the public about the improvements or a uh, new changes introduced in the law in this revised corporation code sasabihin nila or rather sinabi nila may forever sa mga corporations ang corny but that is true ang corporations ngayon as a general rule forever they can exist forever unless of course the certificate of incorporation says otherwise if the incorporators opt doon sa kanilang articles of incorporation na ang korporasyon na to ay good only for 25 years, eh di of course, the SEC cannot do anything about that. Yun ang sabi ng incorporators, 25 years lang. Therefore, yung certificate of incorporation na i-issue ni SEC is only good for 25 years. But that, like I said, is the exception now. If walang nakalagay na term, na particular term, of uh, the life of a corporation doon sa articles na ipapasa ng incorporator sa SEC, 
the SEC will recognize the general rule and deem that a corporation, that resulting corporation, as one with a perpetual existence. Yes. Next, isa pang general power is yung uh, the prerogative to adopt and use a corporate seal. Now, you might think, corporate seal, sir, so logo ng corporation? No, not necessarily. Take a look at this, well, this picture at the right side of your screen, right-hand side. Kung naranasan nyo ng magpanotaryo ng dokumento o kumuha ng certified true copy ng isang dokumento from a government office, you might see the familiarity of this image. What does it look like? It looks like a dry seal. No? Mukha siyang dry seal, class. So, basically, wait nga, tignan nga natin, ayusin nga natin to Dapat meron, uh, what do I, how do I say this? Dapat magpapakita yung text niyan. I think, ay, uh, ayun, kaya pala. Okay, hold on, ha? Kaya pala nagtataka ko, bakit hindi siya nagpapakita? Na, na wala sa wisho yung uh, nawala sa wisho yung display yan i think it i think it shows rather great now nababasa na yung text no again like i said this one looks like a dry seal because that is what it is yan ang corporate seal it is precisely a dry seal what is the significance of a dry seal in official documents. It serves as a signature, as a uh, showing that the document is legitimate. So for example, kumuha ka sa city hall ng official document, sabihin natin, business permit, meron niyang dry seal. No? Nan meron, na, meron pang nakalagay dyan somewhere in the document na not valid without dry seal. Because yung dry seal, yun yung mark of authenticity na talagang galing nga sa city hall yung dokumento mo. A corporate seal acts under the same set of principles. As you can see dito sa screen, a corporate seal is a corporation's signature. So without a corporate seal, Medyo may duda tayo. There is some semblance of doubt as to whether this document which purports to be issued by this particular corporation ay eh talagang from the corporation nga. Kasi, oh, wala namang dry seal. How can we say with uh, some conclusiveness that this indeed came from this particular corporation? Di ba? Hindi. Wala tayo mapangahawakan. So this corporate seal is used to show that the corporation's documents were authorized by management and are official or authentic. So a corporation may adopt a corporate seal as, as a juncture of its general powers. Okay, what else under Section 35 of the Code? A Corporation is empowered to amend its articles of incorporation depende sa sitwasyon. Of course, subject to the procedures under the law. Parte din ng general powers ng isang corporation yung adoption of bylaws and if necessary, the amendment of it. For stock corporations, isa sa mga express powers yung issuance or selling of stocks. I think I have uh, given you a pretty good, with, without having to toot my own horn, ano, a pretty good overview of how stocks are uh, advertised, I would say, as to how stocks move dito sa ating Philippine Stock Exchange. No? Kung paano nakakabili ng shares of stocks through the stock exchange ang mga tao, na gustong pumasok sa ganitong sa ganitong larangan I say for passive income so yung pag uh, pag hold out ng isang korporasyon ng kanilang stocks para bilhin ng mga ng mga tao no at a given price that may or may not change from day to day that is a corporate power so sasabihin ni ano ba to yung yung bagong kumpanya ni Manny Villar na pinag-usapan natin itong huli, sabi niya, soon, this company will be holding its initial public offering, yung IPO nga na tinatawag. 
So everybody who is interested in investing in our new corporation can buy shares of stock for the low, low price of how much ngayon sinabi ko last time? Around 2,000 pesos, which is dirt cheap. Masarap bilhin. Masarap bilhin ng marami. Because it is not every day that you you get to buy shares of stock from a Villar owned company sa ganun kababang halaga. Okay? So, that action of Manny Villar representing his new company, that is a corporate power class. For non-stock corporations, considering na well, wala silang stock na ibinibenta sa mga tao, the prerogative of admitting and impliedly or implicitly denying members, that is also an express power as far as non-stock corporations are concerned. Likewise, part of the general powers of a corporation is the right of ownership. Corporations can acquire, use, and dispose property, whether real or personal. As the transaction of the local business of the corporation may reasonably and necessarily require, subject to the limitations prescribed by law and the constitution. So, a corporation can definitely acquire land. Pwedeng bumili ng kanyang sariling lupa ang isang korporasyon. At yung titulo na i-issue over that certain parcel of land is in the name of the corporate president ba? No. The board of directors ba? Hindi rin. The incorporators kaya? No. Of course not. In the name of the corporation. Bakit? You might ask. Babalik tayo doon sa binabalikan nating madalas. A corporation has a separate and distinct personality. Detached from those of the incorporators, the stockholders, the corporate officers, etc. A corporation is its own person. Kaya meron din siyang kakayanan na mag-acquire ng sarili niyang property. So merong mga sasakyan, merong mga tools and implements in the name of the corporation na pagmamayari ng corporation. And in the same vein, a corporation can acquire and use property at the same time it can dispose of property pa pwede niyang ibenta. That is precisely the point no, behind corporations engaged in the real estate business. Diba? Like Camellia. Siyempre, Camellia will purchase large swaths of land pagmamayari ni Camellia yan. Titled under its name. Ngayon, isasubdivide yung mga lupa, tatayuan ng mga bahay, whether row houses or bungalows, mga duplex and what not. Tapos, yung subdivided lands, ibebenta sa mga interested buyers, mga nagahanap ng sarili nilang bahay. That, no, all of that, is part and parcel of the right of ownership of a corporation which itself constitutes a general power. Needless to say, no, a corporation also has contracting power. A corporation has the power to enter into contracts, partnership, joint venture, merger or consolidation with which, we'll be, with which we will be discussing near the tail end of this video series or any commercial agreement with natural and juridical persons. Pwede siyang makipagkontrata sa physical na tao. If some person applies for a job at a corporation, it is the corporation which contracts with this person doon sa contract of employment. Diba? Who is the employer? The corporation. Sino yung kakontrata? A physical being, the employee. At the same time, pe, pwede rin makipagkontrata ang isang korporasyon sa kapwa niya korporasyon. Pwede rin makipagkontrata ang korporasyon sa gobyerno. Pwede rin makipagkontrata ang korporasyon sa isang partnership or other business organization. A corporation also has the power or prerogative to donate if it so desires. 
No? A corporation has the power to make reasonable donations, including those for the public welfare or for hospital, charitable, cultural, scientific, civic, or similar purposes. Provided that no foreign corporation shall give donations, I think this one is familiar with you. Dito tayo nag-umpisa, di ba? Shall give donations in aid of any political party or candidate for purposes of partisan political activity. For example, if you ever you find if ever you find yourself at the heart of Manila, you might take time to visit UST, of course, the oldest school in the Philippines, established back in the what the 15th century, 1611. So. UST has more than 400 years of a esteemed academic existence in its figurative belt. No? One of the buildings at UST is the UST Tanyan Key Student Center sa bandang likuran near the Dapitan side if you've visited UST before. So one of the relatively newer, new-ish buildings kung saan ako natulog one night Nung ako ay nagproctor para sa 2020 slash 21 bar. So, this building is a donation. By whom? Well, kita naman sa pangalan Tanyanki. We will get to that in a bit. Let us go. Let us walk from UST to Recto. No, malapit lang naman ang Espanya sa Recto. Konting lakad. You will be passing by my alma mater, the Far Eastern University. And then, liliku ka pakaliwa. From Nicanor Reyes, you will then be reaching Recto. Walk a bit, just uh, just some distance short of Mendiola, you will be seeing the University of the East. So, the University of the East has, as one of its main uh, attractions maybe, the UE Tanyan Key Garden. From the grapevine, it was mentioned that this garden is worth 19 to 20 million pesos. And at some period, uh, during some unspecified period of time in the past, the incumbent president of UE made this remark na parang this is the hardest garden to maintain worth 19 to 20 million pesos na hindi naman talaga kailangan ng eskwelahan. Okay? But, you know, wala din namang posisyon si UE na pumili. Kasi, syempre, donasyon yan eh. So, binigyan ka lang, di ba? Ikaw ay binigyan lang naman ng biyaya. You are in no place, if at all, to make any complaints about it. But yun nga, Mahirap daw i-maintain. But nevertheless, like the Tanyan Key Student Center in UST, this garden also came from the same Tanyan Key. So sino ba itong si Tanyan Key na ito? Before that, no, let us go back in time. Let us go back to 2009. So from Manila, let us go to Bataan, Bagak, Bataan. So there is this elementary school, I think a I think a public school maybe. There is a or maybe this one is private, no? I'm not entirely sure since it's uh, administered by the brothers of the De La Salle uh, brothers of De La Salle, no? Probably private. But anyway, the point is that the same Tanyan Key Foundation back in 2007, bale two years prior, made a donation to the school. So, ano ang dinonate? Not just a classroom, not just some chairs or a blackboard, but an entire school building. No? With no less, and I am quoting from the article now that you're seeing in your screen, with no less than Foundation Chairman and President Dr. Lucio C. Tan. Oh, sounds familiar. Handing the check to the DLSU brothers, Emmanuel Sia and Mandy Duhunko, together with representatives of the De La Salle Alumni Association. So, Lucio Tan, 
Tan Yan Ki. Hmm. I think I see a connection. And in all likelihood, I think you see the connection too. So sino ba itong si Tan Yan Ki? No? By Tan Yan Ki, we mean this foundation. The Tan Yan Ki Foundation Incorporated. Tan Yan Ki, this is the corporate social responsibility arm of the Lushotan group of companies. All right? The Tanyan Key Foundation has a 15-man board of trustees headed by Chairman Dr. Lucio Tan and an executive director. So what does this tell us? No? What does this tell us? A corporation like the Tanyan Key Foundation has the power to donate. As a matter of fact, some non-profit corporations like this Tanyan Key Foundation ito yung kanilang ginagawa lang talaga. They donate, they donate, they donate for the betterment of society. Now, of course, no, an argument can be made or can be had about whether the garden at UE has that kind of effect. What is the betterment of society aspect in there? But consider that the UE Tanyanki Garden is one of the rather few green spaces in the very, very urbanized, smoke-ridden city of Manila. So perhaps, no, I would think that the value lies in there. At any rate, it's a donation. At kapag ang isang tao ay nagbibigay mula sa kabukalan ng kanyang kalooban, well, sino ba naman tayo para tumanggi? Let us move on. Another power of a corporation, another general power is the granting of retirement benefits and the like. Corporations have the power to establish pension, retirement, and other plans for the benefit of its directors, of its trustees, officers, and employees. You see, there is this jurisprudence defining retirement benefits as this bundle of benefits that serve more or less as a showing of thanks, as a showing of gratitude to a retiree for the many, many years he or she has offered, no, the best years of their lives, which they could have spent doing practically anything else, no, probably something that is a better way of spending your time, probably spending your time at home with your family, doing some endeavor that would make you smile instead of, you know, suffering through your eight to five job five days a week. Sometimes you go on overtime. Sometimes you take your work home with you and you work on weekends. Instead of make, doing something that makes you happy, you work and work and work, not just for a month or two, not just for a year not just for half a decade. These people who are entitled to retirement benefits, said the Supreme Court, they have given their lives, the best years of their lives in the service of, for example, this corporation or this company or this government office. And it is only right, it is only just that their years of service, their dedication, their loyalty be rewarded through these benefits. And so the corporations, you know, any corporation, for that matter, has the power to establish and grant these benefits. And then, a corporation, of course, has incidental powers, as we have established, which also falls within the classification of general powers. To exercise such other powers as may be essential or necessary to carry out the purpose or purposes as stated in its Articles of Incorporation. So yan ang general powers. General ang tawag kasi the subject matters are rather general. But now, we move towards specific powers. Powers that are exercised for specific purposes. Dito, umapasok yung stockholder concurrence. Yung mga general powers na na-discuss natin kanina, sapat na na nag-deliberate at bumoto ang board of directors or trustees as the case may be. Pero dito, in the exercise of specific powers, 
kinakailangan ng team effort. It is not only the board which calls the shots, but also the stockholders. Now, for example, the power to extend or shorten corporate term. What does this imply, class? Like I said, the general rule is that corporations now, under the regime of the revised corporation code, they now have perpetual existence. But by way of exception, the incorporators may decide or may opt to give the corporation a limited term. 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, what have you. What if, after the issuance of a certificate of corporation, the, the corporation or the people that comprise the corporation, they decide to extend the life of the corporation. What then? What do they do? Well, fortunately for them, a corporation has the specific power to extend or, short, or short, shorten the corporate term. Of course, not just extension as you have seen. No? Pwedeng paikliin. The corporate term can be shortened. So kung feeling ninyo, kung feeling ng incorporators, kung feeling ng corporate officers na we have done our purpose. I think this is more, uh, uh, more of a reality when it comes to corporations with certain advocacies. When the advocacy is already fulfilled, then there would be not much point in continuing, would it not? Diba? So might as well call it quits, might as well liquidate the assets of the corporation and distribute the same to the stockholders. And then, be gone, diba? So, it can also be done. Shorten the corporate term. So, say, from 10 years, gawin na lang natin 7 years or 5 years. Since mukhang matatapos naman na, malapit nang maatain yung ating advocacy or if the corporation was constituted for a certain project and the, the project is, from the looks of it, almost done, then why wait? Diba? You can shorten the corporate term. And as a matter of fact, a co the corporate term can be shortened to such an extent that it would result already in the dissolution of the corporation. Basically, you know, clicking or tapping the off button on the corporation. We will be discussing that much later. So take note, ah, napakikita ninyo dito, the power to extend or shorten corporate term. You can see here M plus two-thirds. So for purposes of this discussion, as we are going through the specific powers, I would like you to take note of this terminology here. For our class lang to, I would like you to remember the full import of this. Like for example, M, kapag nakita ninyong M, this means that in order to exercise this specific power, there must be a majority vote of the board of directors or the board of trustees. Now, if you see a two-third, it means that in order to exercise the power, there must also be at least a two-thirds vote of the outstanding capital stock or of the members of a non-stock corporation. So, if non-stock corporation, two-thirds of the members. Pag stock corporation, at least two-thirds ng mga stockholders. Whether that's voting or non-voting, no? Outstanding capital stock. Now, next, specific powers. Another, another kind would be to decrease or increase the corporate stock. Corporate stock simply means the instrument used by corporations as a way to raise capital. So corporate stock is just stock, no? Shares of stock issued by a corporation as a way to raise capital, like I said. This is how it goes, no? You are an investor. The investor, basically you, you want to buy a share of stock in this particular corporation. Sabi natin, Jollibee Foods Corporation. I want one. I buy a share of stock through the stock exchange. I now have one share of stock with Jollibee Foods. Now, what does, what does it do for me? Through my acquisition of this share of stock, 
I am now entitled to voting rights or dividends of the company profit or at the very least, kung non-voting share, proportionate ownership in the issuing corporation. So yan yung sinasabi ko dati na, oh, technically you're a part owner of Jollibee. But of course, that does not give you any leeway to ask for free food. no? But you know, on paper, technically you are already a part owner of that corporation. Once you acquire a share of stock, once you acquire corporate stock, you transform. No? There is a transformation. Before, you were merely an investor, a prospective investor at that. But once you acquire a share of stock, you, the investor, will then transform into what we call a stockholder. Now, of course, we also have to deal with how shares of stock are classified. Okay, of course, there are voting and non-voting shares. Voting shares are also called ordinary shares. You know? for, mo for the most part, more often than not, once you buy a share, you get some kind of voting right. So you get to have your say in the policies of the corporation. Like for example, balikan natin. Dito, sa prerogative in increasing or decreasing corporate stock. Sabihin natin, the corporation has fallen on a tough times and so we need to, we need to decrease corporate stock. Kasi corporate stock depends upon, no? Or rather, sabihin natin, oh, fallen on hard times. Rather, i-increase yung corporate stock para mas maraming bumili. No, na mas marami tayong shares of stock na available in order for in order for interested investors to buy. Or if you're a new corporation, no, you are riding the hype of popularity. Malakas ang malakas ang bentahe ng stocks, mauubos, mauubos, and therefore there is a need to supply a fresh batch of corporate stock. Kasi due to, due to intense demand, oh, yung stock natin ngayon, lahat mabibili na yan. So kailangan natin ng bago. We have to issue new ones. And how can we do that when the Articles of Incorporation only mentions a particular amount, a particular number of corporate stock? So ibig sabihin, hanggang doon lang ang upper limit mo. So papano yun? No? The, the corporation must resolve to issue or must resolve to increase corporate stock in order to allow the corporation to issue more and more and more. Kailangan ng majority vote ng board of directors. Kailangan ng two-thirds concurrence ng stockholders holding or owning the uh, capital stock, no? ng outstanding capital stock. So again, balik tayo. There are voting shares or ordinary shares. There are also non-voting shares. So preferred non-voting or non-voting. We will be going into what the word preferred means. No? There is a certain nuance dun sa preferred. Preferred as to what? May sagot yan. We will be going into that shortly. Next, yung redeemable shares, which means na itong non-voting shares na to ay issued in favor of an investor or a stockholder with the understanding that the corporation will be redeeming or taking back the shares after the lapse of a certain point in time. Now, finally, treasury or acquired shares. So ano ang tawag dun sa redeemable shares na na-redeem na ng corporation and therefore bumalik na dun sa stock ng capital ng corporation? Yan ang tinatawag na treasury or acquired shares. Now, what about a certificate of stock? Kasi sometimes, when you hear people talk about corporate, uh, corporation law, corpo, lingo, stocks, and whatnot, sometimes, or I would think rather rarely, fortunately, people tend to synonymize shares of stock and certificates of stock. But these, my friends, are two different things. A certificate of stock is a written evidence of the share of stock, but it is not the share itself. 
This is according to the Supreme Court in its 1998 decision in the case of Lincoln Philippines Life versus Court of Appeals. A certificate of stock being a document issued by the corporation must be signed by the president or vice president of the corporation and must be countersigned by the corporate secretary or the assistant secretary as the case may be. Otherwise, it is not deemed issued. This is according to the decision in Bitong versus CA, likewise issued by the Supreme Court in 1998. So this class is what a certificate of stock looks like. We are looking at a picture of a certificate of stock issued by the Coca-Cola company. Admittedly, this is rather old. I think this is 1956. Signed by the president. Countersigned by the uh, corporate secretary. I think there is also a signature of the vice president here dito sa magkabila and then authenticated dito din sa left hand and right hand sides. No? So this is evidence that you own a share of stock. But it, is it per se the share of stock? No, of course not. We have to be able to distinguish. So now we go to the matter of what does preferred mean? So what the hell does it mean anyway? Preferred may be read in different ways. We can refer to preference in dividends. So dividendo, kagaya na nga ng sinasabi natin, by dividends we mean share of the revenue, share of the shareholders, no? parang redundant pakinggan but it is what it is, no? yung share ng mga shareholders doon sa revenue ng korporasyon. So that's dividends. So when you have a preferred non-voting share, pe pwedeng it might pertain to preference in dividends. So you get first pick, mas mauuna kang bigyan. Okay? Kumpara doon sa mga ibang non-preferred yung kanilang mga shares. Next, preference in distribution of assets. Pe pwede rin ganito. Once the corporation terminates once it is dissolved and once it undergoes liquidation, bale parang winding up sa partnership, syempre, i-distribute yung assets, like I mentioned, sa mga shareholders. At if you are in possession of a preferred share with, a, with the aim in mind that it is preferred in the distribution of assets, then mauuna ka ring bigyan ng mga assets. Okay? Parang parang mauuna ka sa pila. Meron din namang preferred shares na ang implication ay preference in both dividends and distribution. And finally, there are other kinds of preference that may be outlined probably in the bylaws or in some other document or issuance by the corporation. Next, no? Another specific power of the corporation is to incur or create bonded indebtedness. So nakikita nyo na naman ulit ito. E pwede lang to if mayroong majority vote ng board of directors at may two-thirds majority concurrence ng uh, stockholders owning the outstanding capital stock. So basically, what is bonded indebtedness anyway? Bonded indebtedness is defined as indebtedness represented by bonds. So ito mga borrowers, borrowers no, they issue bonds to raise money from investors willing to lend them money for a certain amount of time. So itong investors, bibili sila ng bond sa isang korporasyon. The corporation now issues a bond. Basically, the bond constitutes a promise for the corporation to return whatever has been lent to them after a certain span of time. Okay? So, ngayon, itong pera na to, na nakukuha ng corporation in exchange for the bond, pe pwede nilang gamitin for a valid purpose. No? Mag-i-issue ng bonds kasi kailangan ng corporation ng pera. So, ito naman mga, in ito naman mga, mga investors, sige, bili tayo ng bond. Kasi parang ang, ang impression doon on their end, parang nagtabi ka lang ng pera, parang naka-time deposit siya. Once na mag-expire yung time, once na mag-mature yung, yung uh, bond, no, the corporation will then be obliged to return to you the money okay, in exchange for the bond. I hope you understand the concept. So yan, di ba? Mababasa natin dito. Investors who buy a bond effectively lend money to the corporation 
and the bond signifies an obligation on the part of the corporation to repay the investor when the same matures. What else? What else? Another specific power of a corporation is the power to deny preemptive right. Makikita ninyo, two-thirds lang. Two-thirds lang. Sa madaling sabi, dadaan lang to sa, sa stockholders lang. The stockholders which represent two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock. As a general rule, all stockholders enjoy what we call a preemptive right. So what is this preemptive right? This is the right to subscribe to all issues or disposition of shares of stock in proportion to their respective shareholdings. Now you might be thinking, what does that mean, sir? Simple lang ang ibig sabihin niya. Sabihin natin mag issue itong si korporasyon ng bagong batch ng shares of stock. May preferred status ang mga existing stockholders ng korporasyon before those who are not yet stockholders. Kung baga meron silang preferred status, they can opt to buy part of this new batch of stocks. All right, kung gusto nilang bilhin, they can exercise their preemptive right. They can preempt the sale. Sila na ang bibili. Sa halip na yung mga investors na hindi pa naman stockholders ang bibili. All right, so that's preemptive right. Though of course, by way of exception, preemptive right cannot be invoked in any of these situations. Number one, if there is no such thing as preemptive right in the articles. Kapag pinagbabawal ang exercise of preemptive right under the articles of incorporation, then of course, walang preemptive right. Next, as to shares issued in compliance with laws requiring stock offerings to the public. Kasi, di ba, for example, initial public offering, kinakailangan mayroong certain number ng shares of stock na kailangang i-offer sa publiko because after all, that's the point of an IPO. So, yung portion na yun, hindi siya pe pwedeng gamita ng preemptive right. Talagang intended siya for the consumption of potential investors. And finally, ito na, as regards shares issued in good faith with the approval of the stockholders representing two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock. All right. So the stockholders can can make the determination na itong certain portion ng ng shares na to hindi siya pe pwedeng gamitan ng preemptive right. Now in exchange for property needed for corporate purposes or in payment of a debt previously contracted by the corporation. So itong shares na to, itong itong yung proceeds niya kapag naibenta na siya sa mga outsiders yung makuku makukuwang pera dito ng korporasyon ay gagamitin for these purposes. Ipambibili ng panibagong property ng korporasyon or ipambabayad ng utang ng korporasyon. And therefore, it would not make sense no, na for existing stockholders to exercise their preemptive right para doon. Kasi talagang ang intention is bilhin siya ng mga investors from the outside kasi kinakailangang mag-inject ng fresh capital. Okay? Now, other specific powers to sell, dispose, lease, encumber all or substantially all of the corporate assets. Lahat o halos lahat ng mga gamit, ng mga properties, ng mga pagmamayari ng korporasyon, ibebenta. Hindi basta-bastang desisyon. Dahil dyan, kinakailangan ng two-thirds. No? Two-thirds ng mga stockholders or for non-stock corporations a majority of the trustees. All right? And of course, the power to purchase or acquire the corporation's own shares. So, bibili ng korporasyon yung sarili niyang shares. That is another specific power. Now, let us go to what we call the trust fund doctrine. This doctrine states that capital stock, properties, and other assets of a corporation are regarded as equity in trust for the payment of corporate creditors. All funds received by the corporation in payment of the shares of stock shall be held in trust for the corporate creditors and other stockholders of the corporation. What is the implication of this? 
ayon sa trust fund doctrine, ang properties na pagmamayari ng isang korporasyon ay hindi talaga strictly speaking para sa korporasyon lamang. Now, this school of thought proffers the idea that parang transient nature lang ang paghawak ng korporasyon sa capital stock, sa properties, at sa mga ibang assets nito. These properties are only held in trust for the payment of the creditors of the corporation. Okay? So that's what the trust fund doctrine provides. Na hindi pa pwedeng basta-basta o harabas ang pagdispose ng korporasyon sa kanyang properties. Hindi niya pa pwedeng i-dispose through its own initiative lahat or substantially all of its properties especially without the concurrence of two-thirds no? of, the, of the stockholders owning the holding the OCS, di ba? holding the outstanding capital stock. Hindi pa pwede. Dahil in the first place, the corporation should not so easily dispose of this pursuant to the trust fund doctrine. Lahat ng properties na yan, ay hinahawakan lamang ng korporasyon, iniingatan kasi pwedeng ipambayad sa mga utang nito. Kapag dinispose yan lahat ng korporasyon, saan na lang uhugot pag mayroong creditor yung korporasyon na nag-demand ng kabayaran? Where then? Hence, no, this trust fund doctrine. Distribution of corporate capital according to the Supreme Court in Ong versus Chu GR number 144476 in its decision dated April 8, 2003. Ang sabi ng Supreme Court, again, the distribution of corporate capital is allowed only in these three instances. Pwede lang mag-dispose ng corporate capital, mag-distribute. No? In one, amendment of the articles to reduce the authorized capital stock. Number two, the purchase of redeemable shares by the corporation. And number three, dissolution and eventual liquidation of the corporation. Jan lang sa tatlong yan. Pepwede. Now, other specific powers. Investing in another corporation or business for a purpose other than the primary purpose of the corporation. So again, di ba? As a general rule, the corporation should, in a word, mind its own business. A corporation is more often than not instituted or formed for a particular business purpose. And as much as possible, kung yun lang ang business mo, dapat dun ka lang. Okay? And therefore, if a corporation seeks to invest in another corporation for a different business purpose, different at least from the business purpose talaga ng corporation, it has to go through a vote. A majority vote, no? Kaya na kailangan ng board of directors as well as a two-thirds concurrence, two-thirds majority ng shareholders owning the majority of the outstanding capital stock. Ganon din, no? Another specific power is the power to declare dividends, which needs to go through a two-thirds majority vote ng mga stockholders owning. Outstanding capital stock. Now, what is a dividend? A dividend is the distribution of some of a company's earnings to a class of its shareholders, as determined by the company's board of directors. That portion of the corporation's profit that remains after distribution of dividends is called retained earnings. So, okay, let me guide you through the process. No, the corporation earns revenue. Kumita ang korporasyon. Ngayon, the shareholders would, uh, basically the board muna would determine meron ba tayong pwedeng i-issue na dividendo? Malaki ba yung kinita natin? Now, kinakailangan dumaan ito, itong uh, determination ng board of directors. So sabi ng board, it looks like we are in a position to declare and then distribute dividends. Ngayon, idadaan yan sa Shareholders, all right. The shareholders shall put it to a vote. So if a two-thirds vote is achieved, two-thirds majority, 
then dividends can be distributed from out of the revenue of the corporation. Now, there are instances where some amount no, is left over after the distribution of dividends. Yan yung tinatawag nating retained earnings. Now, another specific power is the power of a corporation to enter into management contracts. So dito, no, kinakailangan ng majority vote ng mga board of, sa board of directors as well as as an exception to the others, no, only a simple majority of the stockholders. Or, no, there is another scenario where stockholders representing the interests of both the managing and the managed corporation own or control more than one-third of the outstanding capital stock entitled to vote of the managing corporation. So basically, naalala nyo pa yung alter ego natin, parang may allegations ng alter ego. Kasi yung stockholders dito sa Corporation A who seeks to be managed by way of management contract by another corporation, Corporation B. E kaso itong stockholders, no? yung stockholders ni Corporation A at ni Corporation B, parang pareho lang. And they own or control more than one-third no? of the outstanding capital stock voting no? capital stock nitong managing corporation. Sila-sila lang din ang stockholders, in other words. Or, where a majority of the members of the board of directors of, of the managing corporation also constitute a majority of the board of directors or of the managed corporation. So dito, sa scenario A, oh, di ba? More or less the same stockholders between these two corporations. Ngayon naman itong scenario B, sa board of directors naman more or less the same board of directors ang nakaupo sa corporations A and B. So in that case, kinakailangan na hindi lang pe pwedeng simple majority of stockholders. Kinakailangan dito majority, majority vote of the board of directors and two-thirds majority vote ng stockholders owning a majority of the outstanding capital stock. And of course, yet another specific power is the power to amend the Articles of Incorporation. In order to amend the Articles, kinakailangan ng majority vote ng Board of Directors plus a two-thirds vote of the stockholders representing or owning the majority of the outstanding capital stock. Now, 